morning people i hope you're doing great and being kind to yourself today we are going to be turning these into this now i'm not a pro candle maker at all i'm just a woman who doesn't like to throw away perfectly reusable things and so i turn them into useful things and candles are really useful in case you're experiencing a power outage a broken radiator a boring date night or you know there's a huge spider and you need to set the whole house on fire now i only bought the very basic things that you need for candle making and used what i had at home and made some candles so this is what i'm going to show you today you will need candle scraps wicks white tack wick sustainers scissors pliers a jar or something to put your candles in a chopstick pen or something long and thin a heat proof bowl a pot that is smaller than your bowl essential oils a kitchen scale a small spoon a towel and paper napkins you can use any used candles there are three main types of wax paraffin soy and beeswax but for what we're doing we're making container candles that don't need to stand on their own it really doesn't matter what type of wax or blend that we use. We don't discriminate in our candle making process, but we do color code. Look at these guys. Hello. So once you've got enough candle butts, you're going to need a container to pour your wax in. And we really only have three options. Either glass, ceramic, or metal. You never want to use plastic because obviously it will melt and that's no good. Now if you're going to use glass, there are a couple of criteria. You don't want to use a glass that's too thin, like a wine glass. And you don't want to use a glass that has kind of a funky shape like some vases do because there's a high chance that the glass will overheat and shatter and explode. And I was only kidding when I said that candles are useful for burning your house down. So get rid of that. Now what I'm going to use is I'm just going to reuse these old candle jars. I bought these candles and they came in these jars. So I'm almost guaranteed that they're not going to break. But... Wick size is also very important. That's wick with a W. You don't want to go too big for your container because then it might overheat the sides, which could be problematic. So which size wick should you get? Honestly, I don't know. It's all going to depend on the size of your container. So you're going to have to experiment yourself with different container sizes or wick sizes, but I will say that this candle is very informative because I know exactly what was melted and so I measured this distance of the hole and it's eight centimeters so I know that my two millimeter wide wick can burn a candle that is approximately eight centimeters in diameter. Also I'm obviously going to reuse this wax so nothing is lost and I've got a piece of information about my wick. This is my wick. Now it's uncoated and also five meters long, so I'm going to have to do a couple of things to it before I can use it to make candles. Now you can buy wicks that are ready for use, so if you buy those, then you can skip a couple steps. If you want scented candles, there are two options, either essential oils or synthetic fragrance oils made for candle making. I will be using essential oils because that's what I have, but I know that they're not cheap. So if you want scented candles, but don't want to spend on essential oils, I looked it up and you can definitely not use perfume because it contains alcohol and that's very flammable. So that's not what you want. Instead, you can buy fragrance oils made for candle making. They're typically a lot cheaper than essential oils.
here for late because it's hot. Now you want to let the wax cool significantly before adding any fragrance. The reason for this is because you don't want to add any essential oils or fragrances past its flash point. And although that sounds really cool, it basically means that you're burning your fragrance so you're not going to smell it or it's not going to smell as nice. Now here's the part where you might go, oh hell no, because you need to add 1% of the total wax weight in milliliters of essential oils. That means that if you've used 500 grams of wax, you need to add 5 milliliters of essential oils. And most of them come in these 10 milliliter bottles, so that would mean half the bottle. Up to you to decide if that's worth it or not. But if you decide it's not, then I would recommend not putting anything at all because less than 1% would mean that you're just making a really expensive unscented candle. And if you're using fragrance oils, then you need to be between 6 and 10% of the total wax weight. Because we're using a blend of waxes and we don't know which ones, there's a high chance that we've added a wax that shrinks when it cools. So to prevent your candle shrinking in the glass, you want to let your wax cool down until just before it starts hardening, which is called the, the congealing point. It's roughly at room temperature. And the wax will start looking cloudy and maybe there's a film on top, that's when you want to start pouring it into your jar. Pour slowly and as low and close to your jar as possible to avoid creating air pockets. Okay, day two. So, um, these are the ones that I made on camera, and after that I made these three other blends. And, well, they didn't come out quite exactly the way that I had imagined, except for this one, which looks quite good. So they all have sinking, and this one has it really bad. It actually had a hole, which was probably an air pocket. Now I read um, online to see what could cause this and the internet is not quite sure some of them say you have to pour at a lower temperature others say that you have to pour at a higher temperature now these are actually in order from lowest temperature to highest temperature pour so clearly it doesn't really matter at which temperature I pour it because I always have the same problem now this one is really bad it has a lot of air bubbles so clearly I stirred that one too fast or poured it too fast. Now what's really interesting between these two, oh this can come out actually, is the difference in the texture. This one has got all these little bubbles on top. This was the first one that I poured and this one is nice and smooth so I don't know. I don't know what any of this means and it doesn't really matter because we can fix the sinking. We can fix it, it's an easy fix, a bit of a boring fix, but it's fixable. I already did it for these two. Basically, what you use is a hair dryer, or even better, if you have it, a heat gun. These four, I poured them much hotter, and so the wax shrunk, and so you can kind of, you can kind of move it in the glass. Not a problem, it doesn't bother me. These problems are really, aesthetic problems. They're, they're not going to alter how your candle burns and it, it definitely is going to work. But anyway, let's fix these. Alright, so I've already managed to melt that little side lip thing and it's really cool to see the inside air pockets kind of opening so let's keep going so this is what it looks like now i might go over it a little bit so that it doesn't look like it's been heated okay i think it looks pretty good just gonna put it here make sure that this sits straight so I could go a lot longer 
and melt it further but I think I think it'll already look really good plus to me the point is that it looks like it's a homemade candle if it looks too perfect then nobody's gonna believe that you made it so it's those little imperfections that make it a great candle it's a wabi-sabi candle and that's that's in fashion now right that's popular I love wabi-sabi it's just that the appreciation of imperfect things it's great I'm so proud of this little candle at this stage it's gonna be fine especially if you light it and as long as you let the candle burn for long enough that it has a chance to melt the entire diameter of your candle you'll be fine and anyway that's what you're supposed to do with any candle you're always supposed to let them burn long enough that everything has melted for at least half a centimeter or something like that and that will make sure that your candles stay straight every time So the last thing you want to do is remove whatever you used to hold the wick and then you want to cut the wick so that it's about a centimeter or two long. I'm pretty sure that I spent as much time with the hair dryer as I did in the whole process of making each candle but in the end they turn out pretty great if I do say so myself so I, I'd say it's worth it. I hope the instructions were clear and if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. Also, if you are going to be trying this, please be safe. Pretty much every part is either boiling or really hot and you could hurt yourself. So be mindful of that. Never leave your wax melting by itself. And even if you are using essential oils for their therapeutic properties, it's never a good idea to leave a burning candle by itself in a room, especially not if there are young children or irresponsible adults around. Thanks for watching.